All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to the Why Choose a Career in Tech Sales webinar hosted by Memory Blue. Uh, super excited that you've decided to join us this afternoon. We've got a lot of good information for you on tech sales and uh, kickstarting your career in sales. Um, so welcome. If uh, you see the Q&A button on your screen, go ahead and uh, pop questions in there as we get going. We're, we'll have a lot of opportunity for Q&A at the end of our discussion today. So anything that pops up as we're chatting, feel free to uh, go ahead and ask it in the Q&A box. And we'll go ahead and get started. By way of introductions, um, I am Kristen Westorf. Very excited to be your host today. I head up client services and delivery here at Memory Blue. So that means I manage the entire SDR function here at Memory Blue. I also work very closely with our academy team. Uh, that's the team who trains all of our SDRs here at Memory Blue and puts on our sales training and also work very closely with our campus recruiting team. Uh, our campus recruiting manager is Madison Delisle. She's also joining us today. Madison heads up our campus recruiting efforts at colleges all across the nation. She works very closely with college students and people considering starting their career in tech sales. So she's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to how to land an entry-level sales role. And also joining us from our Denver office, Dia, Gia DeShodens. She's a senior SDR based in our Denver office. About seven months ago, she was uh, in most likely your shoes, she was looking for um, a career and decided to kickstart her career in tech sales. She graduated from college in California and is part of our team in Denver. So we are super excited to spend this afternoon with you and talk a little bit about tech sales as a whole and getting into tech sales. So a little bit about what we'll cover today. We'll talk about the industry, what tech sales means, specifically high tech versus regular tech. We'll talk about what an SDR is or sales development rep and how to enter tech sales um, and kickstart your career. So what it's like being an entry level sales and what you can actually do with an SDR foundation and the different career paths it can take you. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about working at Memory Blue and what we look for in an SDR here. And of course, we will get to your questions. So feel free to pop them in the Q&A as we get going. All right, let's kick this thing off. Let's talk a little bit about high tech, specifically the software industry. So uh, technology is all around us, but there is a difference between uh, you know, low tech and high tech. When we talk about tech sales here today, we're specifically talking about high tech. We mean complex sales, high dollar technology companies. So software, high tech, and SaaS is growing like crazy. It has always been a great industry to get into, but honestly, now more than ever, tech is on fire. Um, you may have noticed in your own personal lives, in your day-to-day, -day, that just since the start of the pandemic, a lot of our day-to-day -day has been forced online, um, and tech or companies have had to adjust by including technology in their day-to-day. -day. So not only has high tech and the industry always been a great industry, but now more than ever, it is growing and booming, and companies have kind of been forced to adopt and embrace technology. So it's actually kind of wild. Uh, by 2022, which is just a month and a half from now, uh, Gartner anticipates a $40 billion increase in tech revenues from just a year ago. So when you think about an industry that you want to align yourself with, um, you want to get into an industry that not only is growing, but um, is growing at such a crazy high rate. So it's kind of um, interesting to know that the top five companies in the S&P 500 are all tech firms and are worth over $2.6 trillion. So when we talk about getting into entry-level sales and getting into tech sales, this is one of the many reasons why, because the growth is kind of never ending and um, there's a lot of opportunity, which is really exciting. So since tech is growing, since there's all these opportunities in high tech specifically, that means that there are opportunities in tech sales. So if you want to maybe transition industries or you want to kickstart your career right after college in technology, sales is the way to do it. 
uh, because if all these tech companies are growing, that means they need to hire people to help sell. So while COVID negatively affected a lot of companies' ability to hire and grow, especially early on in the pandemic, um, what's interesting is the SDR function or sales development function at tech companies either stayed the same or grew. You can see by this graph here on the bottom of your screen that very, very few companies downsized their SDR and uh, sales teams during the pandemic. And even in 2021 alone, most have grown. So when we think about which industry to get into, and we think about jumpstarting our career, uh, there is a ton of opportunity out there for entry level or sales development roles in the industry. So what does an SDR do? If I'm going to get into this high tech industry that's booming and uh, companies are hiring for sales development or the SDR function, well, what does that actually mean for me? What do SDRs do? SDRs are really what I like to call the catalyst or the tip of the iceberg. Most sales aren't made unless an SDR is involved, which is kind of exciting to think about. So an SDR's job is to do research, prospecting, and educating of potential customers um, to buy your product, meaning your software, hardware, your solution. So an SDR's day-to-day -day is all about having conversations, really being the boots on the ground, doing a series of phone calls and maybe LinkedIn or social media touches and emails to educate prospects, uh, prospects meaning potential customers, that their software exists and how it can help enhance their business. So an SDR's goal is to schedule a meeting between a qualified prospect or a potential customer and an account executive. So when we think about high tech and how complex these sales are and how um, expensive sometimes software sales are, uh, what the tech industry has done is kind of divided up the sales process into pieces. An SDR takes the first piece of that sales process. So think about it kind of like you're running a relay race in track and field. The SDR is the person who starts the race. And once that lead or that prospect is warmed up and they are educated and they know a little bit more, their curiosity is piqued, the SDR hands the baton off to an account executive to continue to work the sales process. Now, there are different types of SDR work in their day-to-day. -day. It's very common to have inbound or outbound sales, but ultimately, the SDR's goal is still the same. It's about getting in front of potential customers, having conversations, piquing their curiosity and interest, and educating them on how your software or your solution can enhance their day-to-day. So whether you're working inbound leads, which are you know, marketing leads or event leads, or you're the very first person to ever speak with a potential customer, what we call outbound sales, uh, the, the kind of the core tenants of the SDR job exist. So if that sounds exciting to you, I want to talk to potential customers. I want to interact with people out in the industry. I want to educate them and talk about my software and really kind of dive into this high tech industry. Well, what does a good SDR do? There are qualities that take an average or a good SDR and make them elite or amazing. And so these are some of the adjectives that describe at least what Memory Blue and what most uh, high tech companies in the industry are looking for. So you can imagine in sales, uh, it can be a challenging industry. It can be a challenging job. So obviously you need to be hardworking. You need to be willing to kind of go the extra mile and some days dig deep and push through. So driven and hardworking individuals make an elite SDR. Also, when we talk about being competitive, we don't necessarily mean you have to compete with the people around you. What we're looking for are people who are competitive with themselves, people who want to get better every single day, people who want to compete with last week or last month's numbers. So being goal-oriented and competitive is a great quality to have in being an SDR. But ultimately, we don't expect you to know what you're doing when you hop into entry-level sales, especially if it's you've never been in sales before and you've never been in tech sales. Um, most companies, and definitely Memory Blue, we will train you. So you have to be willing to kind of be a sponge and soak up all the coaching and be, uh, be willing to get trained and to learn. 
And ultimately, we believe that all those words, hardworking, driven, competitive, coachable, and proactive embodies hustle. Um, we use that word a lot here at Memory Blue. Um, and if you have that hustle and that grit, uh, you definitely can take yourself from being a good SDR to a great SDR. So the tech industry is booming. It is not going anywhere. So it's a great industry to get into. The way to uh, get into high tech is to start by being an SDR um, and get into entry-level sales. Well, how do I become an SDR? You might be asking yourself. Um, so I'm going to pass it off to my colleague, Madison. And since this is what she spends her days doing is talking to people about how to jump into the SDR role, you are in great hands. Madison? Awesome. Thanks, Kristen. Yeah, let's talk about how you get into that high tech SDR position to start off. So getting into entry level tech sales, what's great is everyone who starts as an SDR, no matter what experience or lack of experience they may have, you're all going to be starting on that same playing field. Um, our data actually shows that our inexperienced hires perform better and tend to ramp up faster than those that come in with some previous experience. And over the last five plus years, we've actually been seeing more and more people coming into the SDR roles without previous experience at all. Um, so if you look at the graph, it kind of shows that there's been a huge increase of people with no experience versus the other way around. Um, our recent college grads make outstanding tech sales professionals because they enter the workforce with a lot of enthusiasm and willingness to learn. And really in tech sales, it's not about how much experience you have. It's going to be about your skills and your ability to learn through coaching and comprehensive training. So if you come in with the right mindset, that's all we need versus ex actual experience previously. And with every SDR, like we've talked about, Kristen touched on it, it's all about the training, the development, coachability, and really putting that effort in at the beginning stages. So with Memory Blue, every SDR is going to start their journey with our world-class academy training program, along with their cohort, which is what we call the group of other SDRs that are going to be starting in your training class. It starts with our three-day boot camp. This is going to be pretty much three days of a lot of information being thrown at you. It's everything that you would need to know in order to be an effective SDR. And it's a more of an instructor-led classroom type training. And then from there, there's six weeks of what we call our foundations, which is ongoing training, where you'll meet with your cohorts and you will have some additional training sessions each week, but you'll also receive one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, team coaching. And we do actually have a mentorship program where every new SDR gets to work with an SDR that's been here for a bit so that you have a peer that you can also go to and learn from while you're kind of ramping up on the job. So then career trajectory. I know for everybody, especially those that are graduating college, the question isn't, okay, what am I only doing for that first job out of college? It's where is this going to lead me down the road? Career growth. Um, for Memory Blue, after that academy, you know, you get into it. Memory Blue does offer a lot of different paths that you can take with your career from that SDR position. Um, most of them are internal promotions. We want to keep those people that want to stay with us long term. So we have um, management positions that you can move into where you'll actually be managing a team of SDRs. You can move into the recruitment side of Memory Blue. So my team or one of our other recruitment teams where you're actually getting to utilize those selling skills that you learned in Academy, but more so to sell Memory Blue and to bring people into the role. Or you can just stay on the sales track and move up into more senior level sales executive type roles. All of these are gonna be promotions that can occur anywhere from four to 15 months. Typically at 15 months, we're gonna start asking you where you wanna move into, but we do wanna see you move pretty quickly. And then we do have one super unique external growth path where you actually have the ability to get hired by Memory Blue's clients. So if you come in, you're kicking butt and your client really likes having you on the team, they can actually offer you a full-time position and Memory Blue will help you transition. You get to become of our alumni network and there's some perks to uh, being a Memory Blue alum. Regardless of external or internal promotions, what's great is it is going to be, you know, on average around the nine to 10 months mark. 
So you're not going to be an SDR in entry level sales for three, four, five years. It is a very quick moving process and it allows you to kind of make your career what you want it to be with Memory Blue. Along with obviously the training and the career trajectory, there is some more fun perks of working at Memory Blue. Um, first and foremost, it is our culture. You're going to be working alongside like minded individuals who are. Um, productive, driven, hardworking, competitive. So we do have some fun kind of activities that we do as a company. I know the our HQ office went to a nationals game this last summer. Denver went skiing last year. Our Austin office does stand volleyball every week during the summer. So there's a lot of um, outside work camaraderie as well. It's a very community-based company when it comes to our culture. After 12 months at Memory Blue, um, SDRs are actually given what we call a 3K vacation, where you can go anywhere in the world and bring whoever you want, and Memory Blue will pay up to $3,000 for that to happen. And then twice a year, we do a tops or top performers trip, where the top 50% of the company gets to go on a vacation, all expenses paid together. Um, we are going to be heading to Cancun in December in a, just a few weeks, and who knows where the next vacation is. So, get on, you know, join Memory Blue so you can get in on that next top performer strip. Going back to the training, we are going to listen to just a couple calls so you can actually hear kind of what A, being an SDR sounds like, and B, what the right kind of uh, training can do for you and your confidence. So both calls are going to be from the same SDR. His name's Steve. So we'll listen to call number one. Mike, why are you running? Hey, Mike, this is Steve Manilakis calling from Inky Technology. Am I catching you at a bad time here? So that was the first call. As you can see, Steve called and Mike literally hung up on him without even saying anything or giving Steve the time of day. Now, rejection is something that you're going to experience, whether you're a brand new first time SDR or you're a sales executive that's been in the game for 10 years. Rejection is inevitable. The difference is going to depend on the training you got and your confidence. Some SDRs may not have felt comfortable really reaching back out. Instead, we're going to listen to call number two, where Steve actually calls Mike back. Mike Wydra. Hey, Mike, this is Steve Manilak is calling from AQ. I think we got to connect with that. I'm good. How are you? Doing good. The reason I'm reaching out, you know, I'm catching out of the blue here, but I see you oversee cybersecurity there at AMG. Uh, we've been helping others in the financial space better protect against phishing attacks by sitting in line with your current SMG. Just curious how you guys are currently adapting your anti phishing program to keep up a more modern and sophisticated threat. Uh, I mean, we have an existing solution in place that, frankly, has been doing really well. All right. We're going to pause it just because it is a few minutes long. Um, as you can see, Steve called him back right away. You know, oh, I think we got disconnected there. Um, got Mike to actually chat with him. This call did end up going on and moving to next steps in the process. Had Steve not had the, you know, the guts to call him back and had let that initial hang up, you know, impact whether or not he called him he wouldn't have got those next steps. So it just goes to show that with the right training and the right company, that rejection is going to seem less impactful than others. All right, thank you so much, Madison. That was amazing. Uh, we wanna spend some time answering your questions and diving into more detail what we had previously discussed. Um, I love hearing that um, call recording of Steve because it just kind of highlights what 
our SDRs here in body. And it can seem really scary to call someone back, but um, we have SDRs every single day who do that and go on and kind of really flex and learn those skills. So thank you for sharing, Madison. Um, let's hop into our questions. Um, as a reminder, I'm Kristen, we have Madison and Gia as well. Um, feel free to use the Q&A button. Uh, we've got some questions already in there, but we wanna see some more. So um, I read a really interesting one that I want to start with. So depending on prior jobs, sales experience or not, would you recommend someone who is looking to switch companies to start as an SDR to learn the product? even if they have prior experience or would becoming an AE first be better? This is a really good question. Um, and Madison or Gia, if you have feedback, please feel free to unmute yourself. Um, so my recommendation is if you've been a high tech SDR, meaning you've been an SDR and you did a pretty solid tour of duty um, in the tech space, you don't necessarily need to be an SDR at a new company. Now, if you haven't been a high-tech SDR, but you want to break into high-tech, then absolutely my recommendation would be start as an SDR uh, because you really need that foundation. And the SDR job as a whole is a foundation for any high-tech sales, whether it's AE, manager, um, or uh, you know, sales adjacent opportunity. So if you have not been an SDR for a tech company, that it would be my recommendation. Sales is very, especially in high tech, it's very different than sales in other industries. So um, that is the first job for a reason. And it is a great foundation for the rest of your career in high tech. Uh, all right. And the next question, what does it look like um, day to day as an SDR? And I'm really glad Gia is with us today because I think she can walk through perfectly what it embodies to be a high performing SDR and what a typical day looks like. Gia? Yeah, thanks, Kristen. Um, first of all, hi, everyone. I am Gia. I've been at Memory Blue for seven months now. Uh, I graduated from Cal Poly in March. I think we might have some fellow Mustangs with us. So if we do, go Mustangs. Um, as far as the day-to-day -day of an SDR, um, I like to come in around 8 a.m., but our day starts at 8.30. And so from 8.30 to 10, we are doing what we call a phone blitz, where we're trying to call our prospects, catch them as they're coming into the office, checking their emails, getting their day started, and trying to book a meeting with them. Um, at 10 a.m., we're meeting as a team. We're going over how many calls we did, what we heard over the phones, did we book any meetings, highs and lows of the morning. Between 10 and 3.30, you have your admin time. So you are potentially sitting in on meetings that you've booked. You're meeting with your manager, your mentor. You might still be in training. Um, you're answering emails, reaching out on LinkedIn, and finding prospects. Um, at, from 3.30 to 5, we have our second blitz, where again, we are calling prospects, trying to catch them as they're tying a bow on the day, trying to book a meeting, um, wrapping up the day. And from 5 to about 5.15, we're again huddling as a team. We're talking about our wins, um, our objections, how many meetings we booked, how many people picked up the phone, whatever it is that's top of mind, we're going to discuss it. We're going to get feedback from the team, and then implement that tomorrow to make tomorrow a great day as well. Thanks, Gia. Uh, the cool thing about the SDR role is, at least here at Memory Blue, is we have a structure or a foundation of what we know makes a successful SDR and a successful SDR's day. But once you kind of figure out the mechanics of the job and you've gone through your training, every day is just a bit uh, unique and different. And that's the what's really fun and exciting about sales, especially tech sales. And you can bring your own personality and working style into the role, but you always know you have that structure and that foundation to fall back to that we know will help you be successful in the job. It's kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, all right, Madison, I think this one will be great for you. Um, Justin asked, after graduating college, he had a hard time getting a job in sales, and so he ultimately went on a different career path. After working three years in construction management, he feels like now might be the time to use his skills and uh, get into sales uh, so that he can ultimately own his own business. What can he do to leverage prior interests and skills and experience um, in his interviews? What do you think, Madison? 
Yeah, um, we've talked a lot about not having sales experience. And I think that's the thing is sometimes we have other experiences that might not be direct sales experience. You can still totally bring those up in your interviews. We love hearing how you can relate what you have been doing back to you know, what you want to be doing now. So whether it's previous job experience, if you played sports, if you've been in an organization, especially if you've been on the board of an organization in school, literally anything that you've done, if you can take things and skills and takeaways from those experiences and apply them to what you could, you know, how they can apply to sales, how you could make memory blue or wherever you're interviewing a good place, that's what we want to see. Not necessarily, oh, they've done sales, but how are they going to use these experiences to then be good here? Yeah, I would echo what Madison's saying. As a hiring manager, I interview people every single week. I want to hear stories. I want to hear stories about challenges that you faced and how you overcame those challenges, what you did to push through and persevere. And that could be a story of you on the basketball court or in day-to-day managing a team in construction. So ultimately, when we think about elite salespeople, they're proactive and hardworking and they can tell stories. And that story can really be about anything. So take all of that skill you've built over the last three years and you you can definitely break into sales, especially now. Um, job seekers have, they're kind of in the catbird seat right now when it comes to uh, entering high tech sales. Okay, so what sets Memory Blue apart from other companies and its competitors? Okay, I think we can all answer this question from a little bit of a different vantage point, but I'm really interested, Gia, in your thoughts on what stood out about Memory Blue to you when you were uh, in the job seeker position. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Three things come to mind right off the bat. Number one was the growth path at Memory Blue. Um, The fact that I had those five paths to choose from straight out of college, it was a 15 month commitment where no matter what, at the end of the day, the company was gonna help me take my next step, whether that was internally or externally. Um, I was super intrigued about being hired out by my client and the fact that that's something that memory blue encourages you to do. So that was one was just the growth and the fact that this was going to set me up for success in the long run. Um, Another one was just the training. I hadn't made a cold call in my life. Um, I knew I wanted to get into sales, but I knew that I didn't necessarily have the background, but I had the skills that it took to succeed. So I knew this was a world-class training program where no matter what, I was going to be successful in sales after this. Um, And then the third one was just the culture. I mean, I just loved that it's work hard, play hard, and that no matter what, after a long week, we're probably going to hang out on the weekends and we're going to do celebratory things together. Um, And I thought that was super unique. So I think that's what sets Memory Blue apart from other competitors. Awesome. Uh, Thank you so much, Gia. I mean, the fact that Memory Blue, we are going to celebrate you when you leave us to go work for one of our clients. It's really unique. Most companies that you speak with when you're on the interview trail, um, they don't talk about that. They want to hire you and keep you at that business as long as possible. We kind of flip it on its head because we want to offer you a fast track and really a launching pad into the industry. And if that means um, that you're leaving us after 15 months, then so be it. We believe that you're going to get the foundation to have a long lasting career. And ultimately, um, that's what I'd say is the most unique thing about Memory Blue. So do you run any competitions? Great question. Thank you for asking this, especially because I mentioned we're looking for competitive people. We run all sorts of competitions at Memory Blue. Um, In fact, we typically run about for a year company-wide. One of my favorites is the March Madness Incentive, where we literally do bracket challenge and SDRs get to compete against other SDRs from other offices and other teams. So that's really exciting. Um, And then, you know, we do competitions where the winner gets $1,000. We also have individual team competitions. Um, We even have an incentive every single week, no matter what, at Memory Blue, where if you are ahead of your number, you can earn a full day off or a half day off every single Friday. In fact, we have SDRs 
who have worked here for a year and have never worked a single Friday, which is pretty cool. Um, but one of my favorite competitions is actually one that's exclusive for our new hires, for people while they're still training at Memory Blue. And Gia, can you talk a little bit about the competition um, during Academy? Yeah, absolutely. So when you first start at Memory Blue, like Madison mentioned, we have a three day boot camp where you're learning just the fundamentals of sales. It's client agnostic. It's just how do you find prospects? How do you write a good email? How do you make a cold call? Um, after that, those following six weeks, you have a cohort, which is the people that you started with on the same day. Um, and you're meeting with your cohort every day for your daily check-in on your metrics, but then also once a week, you're having a foundation session. So you're focusing on a certain part of your call. And what that means is we're actually submitting our phone calls. We're highlighting the part that we want to listen to, and our cohort is going to listen to that, give us feedback, and grade us. And we love competition here at Memory Blue, so this is a competition. Um, and if at the end of it, you have the most points, then you win what's called Biggest Game in Academy. Um, and that's really exciting because you're going to hop on a Zoom where the co-founder is going to give you a personal shout out and it's going to tell you, hey, you won. Awesome job. I actually listened to your call and here are the things you did well. And here's a little bit of feedback. Um, you're going to get a trophy, a LinkedIn shout out and a really hefty bump in your base salary. Um, you will also secure a spot on the next tops trip. So first, second and third place win a bump in the base salary and um, a spot on the next top strip. So already six weeks into the job, you can secure your spot, raise your base salary and get recognized by the co-founder of the company. There's a lot on the line and it's a really awesome competition. Thanks, Gia. Uh, Gia was one of our biggest games. So she knows firsthand what it's like to compete during um, her academy. Okay, uh, in your opinion, what should someone be looking for in a sales role? Should I look for the kind of product I'm going to sell, the type of manager, company culture, or all of the above? This is a great question. Madison, uh, why don't you take this one? Yeah, I mean, the simple short answer is definitely all of the above and more than what was listed. Um, realistically, you are going to want to look at the product because you want to be able to get behind it at least a little bit. Um, I know like with Memory Blue, you aren't always going to know exactly what client you're going to be given, but you know it's high tech. So looking into whether or not high tech is the route you want to go, definitely want to be looking at the training and development. There are companies, I've personally worked at them, where you get five days in a classroom and then you are expected to figure it out on your own. If you're a, a do it on your own kind of learner, that might be the right type of training for you. If you want a bit more coaching, a little more development, then you probably want to look into companies that have similar trainings the way Memory Blue does, where it's kind of ongoing. Um, and then, yeah, the culture managers, it's never going to be something where you know, but if you are coachable and you're willing to learn and willing to grow, then you can pretty much work with any manager. So culture, product, and the training and development style that's going to be best for you are going to be the three major ones that I would absolutely look into for every company that you're interviewing with to ensure that you end up in a place that you want to end up. Madison mentioned earlier that it's not just that that first job in tech sales, but it's your career as a whole. So while all those things, like she said, are important to pay attention to, you want to also be looking at it critically. Like, where is this role? Where's this job and this company going to lead me two years from now, three years from now, five years from now, and even further? So don't just play the short game, play the long game. Think about, is this company, are the people that I'm interviewing with, is the training I'm going to get, is the culture, is it all going to help get me to where I want to be two, three, five years from now? If you can answer yes to all of those questions, then it's probably a really good opportunity for you. But um, one thing that I think is really interesting is it's really hard to know what you want to sell and what product you like until you do it. In fact, I, I mean, I talk to SDRs all the time who say, I thought I wanted to be in cybersecurity and now I'm doing it. And I think I want to be in data storage or vice versa. So um, you never really know until you try. So think about it more from where's this going to lead me? And this, is this going to be the right group of people and leadership and training to help get me there? Because 
you can always figure out what product you like and what software is exciting to you. And um, at Memory Blue, the beautiful thing about this job is you get to dip your toes, kind of like dating before you get married. You get to figure out what technology you actually love um, without having to commit to it on day one. So that was a great question because I think it touched on a lot of things that people are thinking when they think about their first job, at, um, at least in tech sales. So we I have a couple questions here from some different people about academy and training and what happens during the three-day training. And Gia went into some great detail on our biggest game in academy. Um, but from the beginning, we begin with a three-day boot camp here at Memory Blue where um, we fly our SDRs into our headquarters office in Virginia. We also have virtual as well. Um, and the first three days is just a deep dive into everything you need to know to be an SDR, how to find the right prospect on LinkedIn, how to introduce yourself on the phone, uh, how to write a compelling email, right? It's, it's the basic, it's the foundations, it's what you need to know to do the job. But as Madison mentioned, training doesn't stop there. We have ongoing coaching and development, and you really can't be an expert at anything after only three days. So after our three-day boot camp, we have another six weeks of training that we call foundations, where you have the opportunity to practice the things you learned in boot camp. And you get to practice them with your teammates and the people in your cohort, as Gia mentioned, um, and also with our academy facilitators who've all been successful SDRs at Memory Blue. So it's really that opportunity to learn and practice and develop those skills, um, which really kind of encompass what we call Memory Blue Academy. Now, training doesn't end after Memory Blue Academy. Uh, if you're gonna be here for 12 to 15 months, um, at least most of the people we hire, they wanna make sure that they're gonna continue to get trained. So every single week, we have weekly training uh, where everyone in the company on Wednesday afternoon attend training. We also have weekly team call evaluations where we get together as a group and break down calls and working on our, on our technique. You have one-on-ones with your manager. You have that mentor Madison mentioned. So so all of these things in total encompass what training at Memory Blue is and what coaching and development looks like here. So great questions. Um, all right. Um, are there any remote positions uh, like work from home? Um, and we had that question from Carvel. Madison, can you talk to us a little bit about where we're hiring and the roles that we're hiring for? Yeah, so we are hiring in all six of our offices. Um, just to kind of quick list off those cities, we've got our HQ, which is in Tyson's, Virginia. We have a, a Boston area office, Austin, Texas, Denver, Colorado, San Jose, California, which is our Silicon Valley. Got to have Silicon Valley. We are in the tech industry. And then we have our Seattle, Washington office. Um, as of right now, some of our offices are still operating on a hybrid due to COVID restrictions. However, as those continue to ease up over time, we don't offer fully remote positions. We prefer to have everyone in office due to the training, the development, and honestly, the camaraderie of working alongside everybody who's striving for similar goals and are driven. Um, however, we do have remote incentives where you can earn work from home. As Kristen mentioned, you can literally earn Fridays off if you're crushing it. So we do have incentives that allow for remote work, but we aren't offering fully remote positions. And right now our biggest hiring need is our sales development representatives. Um, we are constantly growing as well as constantly having our SDRs get hired by their clients for doing such a good job. So we're always hiring, um, trying to find that next top SDR to come in and, and be a part of the team. Thanks, Madison. Oh, I'll add one thing too. We are hiring for summer interns. Um, it's an SDR internship. So it's the same job as our full-time, but it's for juniors who are um, between junior and senior year of college. So we're actively hiring SDR and interns. Um, we have two of the same question here. How often are SDRs hired externally and or how often do SDRs go work for your clients? 
pretty often. In fact, between 50 and 60% is the average, um, but we have tons of promotion paths internally as well. So a lot of SDRs end up um, sticking around and growing in our different departments from AE to leadership to talent. Um, so there are no shortage of opportunities. There's a lot of paths here at Memory Blue, which does include going and working for a client and becoming a rising star. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what it means to be in sales. So do you ever work more than 40 hours a week? Gia, why don't you take this one? Yeah, um, yes and no. Short answer, it just depends. Uh, that's kind of the beauty of sales. If you're working really hard, you're crushing your numbers, you might work less than 40 hours. You can earn off that Friday. You you're not hitting 40 hours if you're not working one full day in the week. Um, but if maybe you're not having the best month, you might be putting in some later nights where you're up on LinkedIn trying to book a meeting um, or especially in those six weeks, you know, you're, you have a lot of training going on. So you're going to be in a lot of meetings and it's going to be a little bit harder for you to get your daily SDR priorities done at the end of the day. Um, but it really just depends. So some weeks could be really heavy. And then some weeks you might be on top of everything and you're ahead and you're not even hitting 40. So it really just depends. Yeah. And that's very common in sales, whether you're at memory blue or not. Um, we like to say we're on goal time, not clock time. So if you'd like to work um, independently and get all your, your job done and be rewarded for the work that you do, then this is probably the role for you. Um, already, how many calls do you have to make a day? Okay, at Memory Blue, we have a hundred dial per day standard. Um, that's just the standard. That's the minimum. That's what all 300 of our SDRs do every single day. Um, I will say a lot of SDRs make more than that because, um, again, we're on goal time, not clock time. Maybe they want to get ahead of their number before a holiday or they really want to earn Friday off. So a hundred would be the average if you make a hundred dials. Uh, the goal would be to talk to 10 people and ultimately have at the end of that day, one lead or one um, sales prospect who's ready to talk to your client at that point um, and, and continue down the sales process. Uh, all right. Are you only looking for recent graduates? Uh, the short answer, absolutely not. Um, we are often looking for recent graduates and we partner with colleges all across the country, but of course not. We are looking for the right people who are interested in getting into sales, specifically tech sales. Um, and if that's you, the early bird gets the worm, I would suggest reaching out. Uh, the sooner you do, the more opportunity there is to um, start some conversations and potentially get into an interview. But if you embody the adjectives that we listed earlier, it doesn't matter if you're looking to make a career change or you're graduating college, we're here to teach you what you need to know to be successful at the job. So are there any other resources you suggest to look into if we're interested in sales? Um, that's a really good question. I think it would be great if um, all three of us answer this one. I'll start. Um, yes, there are uh, a lot of uh, resources. The first one I would suggest would be books. Um, read books. You can, you can learn a lot about selling and really work on your skill and your technique um, by kind of being a master of, of reading and just looking for knowledge and information. So we like things like spin selling and challenger sale, and it's an oldie, but it's a goodie for a reason, how to win friends and influence people. So absolutely, if you do reading um, and you read a book a month, whether it's sales related or just business related, you absolutely can learn a lot that way. Madison, what would you suggest? Yeah, um, for those that are still in school, most universities, especially the ones that we work with, have sales clubs or marketing um, groups, organizations. They're all named different things on every campus, but there's a lot of student orgs out there for those that have already graduated. There are a lot of um, business type groups that are for business people to join that are free or maybe like cost maybe $50 a month, but there's groups out there that you can join that are like-minded people that you can learn from and kind of interact with and, and ask questions. Another great resource is, I mean, it would be silly for us not to plug our own podcast. We have an awesome podcast that talks with Memory Blue alumni about their career, both at Memory Blue and where they went afterwards, that's a great resource for learning the 
things that they did to get to where they are. Because a lot of the Memory Blue alumni that we are interviewing on our podcast are very successful and has seen that success. So taking their tips and tricks and advice off the podcast is definitely going to be valuable. Kia, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I would say the podcast was a huge one for me, especially in the beginning, but there's also just general sales podcasts, not just Memory Blue. So if you, I mean, I love reading books, but I also love learning when I'm driving. So I'll constantly be playing podcasts. Um, I would also follow sort of thought leaders on LinkedIn. So there's a lot of people that once were SDRs and now they're VP of sales or director of sales, and they're constantly giving advice to SDRs. Um, I think that's what I would add to that. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, What benefits and PTO things like that does Memory Blue offer? Madison? Yeah, Memory Blue does have, you know, your standard healthcare, dental, vision. We have a few different plans for that. Um, You know, PTO, holidays, pretty standard, but we do have some pretty cool additional benefits. Um, We do have a 401k that Memory Blue does match. We have pet insurance. So for those of you that have pets like I do and a lot of the Memory Blue employees, having that pet insurance offered through the company is a game changer. Um, We have student loan reimbursement through the company. And then we have those vacations, the tops trips, the 3k vacations, once you hit a year, um, the happy hours, you know, the the community based type social events. So we have a mix of your standard benefits along with some more unique, more fun benefits as well. That's great. Um, How do you learn the technology of your clients when you are an SDR? That's a good question. And I, I get it a lot, um, especially with people considering, you know, getting into tech sales because they may not be the most tech savvy person. I know I'm not. Um, I still have a hard time figuring out my AirPods someday. Um, but the short answer is memory blue, we're going to teach you enough to be dangerous. Okay. You're going to know enough to have really intelligent conversations with your prospects. You'll have a lot of FaceTime, literally in person, Zoom, over the phone, interactions with your clients so that you'll have the opportunity to learn about their technology. But as a whole, Memory Blue's training is what I like to call technology agnostic. We teach you how to have smart, intelligent sales conversations with people who quite frankly know more about the technology than you ever will. Um, That's the interesting thing about being in high tech is um, if you're calling a chief information security officer, even if you know all the bits and bytes and details about your software, they're always going to know more about their environment than you. And that's what's really exciting and unique about being in tech is you're talking to people who in a weird way, they know more about their environment than you. And so we teach and we train our SDRs on how to ask thought-provoking questions and pain-pulling questions so that whether your first client is um, AI and your second client is financial technology, you can be successful in both. So our training is designed so that it doesn't matter what technology you work on, you can be successful and take it with you the rest of your sales career. So yes, there's some training and you're absolutely going to learn about that technology, but ultimately it's more about asking smart questions and um, the overall sales training versus product training. All right. So we are going to wrap up there. We really appreciate everyone joining us this afternoon. Um, We had some amazing questions that we got to dive into. There will be a recording of the podcast. um, So definitely feel free to check out our website. We'll post it there. If you have more questions, you want to continue the conversation, you're interested in a job or um, talking to Madison and her team, absolutely feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, We're really happy that you joined us this afternoon. And now is the time to consider a career in tech sales. Thanks so much. Have a good one.